Well, thank you. Thank you for uh, being on the presentation list. Uh, I always stick traditional business intelligence, Webby, and get a lot into the nitty gritty details. Uh, I have a lot of fun with it. And one of the ones that's been coming up lately in a lot of the training classes I'm doing is the fact that people, although they're familiar with a lot of these concepts like pro uh, building prompts, they really don't understand the full power of what the tool provides. And the Paris developers are constantly uh, enhancing the product, adding little extra bells and whistles and so on. And something as simple as a prompt can do an awful lot of extra stuff that you don't think about when you're, uh, when you're doing a report. So a prompt isn't just a prompt. Um, we know you, the reason for putting in a prompt is you wanna get out of the editing business. If you have a, some staff working for you and you have them running reports every week for you and the filter conditions have to change, do you wanna be in the business of editing each week the reports to change the hard-coded query filters, change the values of those? You don't have to do that by putting in prompts. But prompts provide, again, additional things like default values, um, uh, creating filters based on uh, LOVs, uh, multiple filter conditions. And we're going to get all the different things for creating complex filters relative to uh, prompts. So like, as always, I like to do it live. So what I'm going to do is get into Webby. I've got a report I developed for time's sake, because I know when we, do the, when we do the business objects user group meetings, we have a 30-minute window. Raj did real well. I was very impressed with Oh, he did, see if I can do the same. And well, for simplicity's sake, and again, the same time, let me open it up. And I'm gonna show a lot of features, not all of them, but as many as I can squeeze in on this. So in my web reporting folder, I have one out there I just created called Prompting West Coast. Let's open it up and it'll save us a little bit of time having me build. You don't wanna see me building a query from scratch and go through all that. We don't really need to do that. So we'll pop it up here and here's my report. So the report's already built, but you cannot see the prompts for it, okay? So when I go back to the query panel, or if I would have refreshed the document, you'd see it, bring it back up. And here they are. Filters were created by dragging the object down and then selecting your op uh, operator and changing the value here from what would have normally been by default. You would normally come in and you do a list of values. I don't want a list of values, I wanted prompt. And what most people do, they turn the prompt on and they forget about it. So that's all prompts can do, I'm done. Same for state, same for, for all product lines as well. So to save a little bit of time, I drag them down already to load them in, okay? And said, all right, they're ready to roll. So let's see what happens by default when I refresh a document that has it. So we'll go over here and run it. Oh, get my little window out of the way here. And we'll run the query. Watch what happens. Should be no surprise to you, your prompt values come up. And what it did, it retained the values from last time when I set this up and tested it. Uh, it came up that way. Initially, it would have not brought the values up. Uh, they would have come up empty, okay? But now it came up with the previous set of values for each one of these three. I have an option to change them. One of the problems, again, is a lot of times, or in many cases, you don't want the values carried forward. You don't want somebody just kind of half looking at it saying, yeah, they're the, they're, they look good, not realizing they were last year's values. So suddenly, you start thinking about it and said, well, wait a minute. How do I change that? I don't want them to remember the previous values. Do I want a default value? Do I want something else in there? And also notice the odd concept of a freeform input here. All prompts by default also give you not only the ability to select from a list, but the freeform. Well, that would be great for, for years, but if I have a new user using these reports and it, and it comes up and they don't know how the state's defined, maybe they hadn't run a query yet, they're not gonna know whether it's a state abbreviation or a state name. Worse yet, here's the one that gets everybody, and you need to think about this big time, is long alphanumeric type or text-based type of objects. Notice all the spellings, all the different names in here for product lines and the spellings. I've been using this universe for what, 23, 24 years? You would think I could spell accessories by now, and I don't, I screw it up. So that's something where I would wanna turn off the freeform input, not giving the users that opportunity to put it in for fear that you know they spend too much time running queries that come back with no data and potentially calling you up for support as well. So along with that, you know, there's some other things also. Maybe I would like to have a default value show up, a default one or two years, or maybe a default state and let the users modify it from there, okay? Uh, there's a feature that we'll talk about in a couple of minutes as well called optional prompt, which to me is one of the biggest things that people overlook and don't realize is there. So let's do this. Let's take what we have, and let's start looking at each one of these. And by the way, just in case you don't remember this, when you create your filters, they're automatically in the order that you originally created them in. Move them around all you want, but it's not gonna change the order. 
So what a lot of people will do is they said, well, I'm constantly changing them into a different order from different users. Then I constantly have to go back in and revisit the properties for each one and make sure they're set correctly and do things like that. So let's not forget that over on the left side up here, you have a query property button that you can go to. That'll help us. We might as well throw it out here early, try to squeeze in what we can. And it gives me the ability to change the order in here without deleting them and recreating them, something like that. So little things like that um, can really help us out and make us our life as developers and support people for these as well. So let's, let's take a look and change some of these and let's see what happens, okay? So I go out here and said, well, let's, let's go to the prompt properties button here. Okay, we'll leave it as a prompt. Number one thing that comes up is the prompt text. I like to put things like put in plural, select years, maybe in parentheses multiple, or for state, which is an equal to, I'll, put, I'll say select state one only. We want to educate your users through the text that's here. And we don't have a lot of it, unfortunately, a lot of space to do that. I know we've got some people, some, SA, some of our developer friends online, if they could expand that. I didn't notice that in 4.3. But so for, let's take years, for example. Number one, prompt with a list of values. How many times have you had users out there that you're supporting where the database is just huge? And every time they try to do a prompt on certain objects, it times out because it takes so long to try to build the unique list of values, it times out. So maybe for someone here, they might wanna uncheck that temporarily and hope that the universe designers can come up a little better way to handle LOVs. With the IDT, it's a lot easier, of course, and take care of it that way. But generally leave it on. Now, exception would be, if you're prompting for a wildcard character or a string using the wildcard feature, there is a situation where you probably don't want the list of values to come up. You're just gonna type in the wildcard string uh, using the, one of the two wildcard position characters for that as well. Now here's a popular one that people like to change. Keep last value selected. Nope, don't do me any favors. My user keeps forgetting on Monday mornings to change the values from the previous week. And I keep getting the same report week after week and request they rerun it. Now select only from a list. Well, we're gonna do that one as well. For years, probably can't go wrong, but we'll do that one. Let's leave optional prompt out of the mix right now. We don't need to worry about that one, although it's incredibly important. And you can even set a default value, certain cases you want to. So if I do set a default value and I go to the values, and please make sure you go to the values. You'll never get off this window without it because the okay button will be grayed out. Make sure you pick a particular one or more values that you want as a default. So you have to remember that as part of that as well. Very important part of the process, setting a default value. Now, another question that comes up for default values, people want it to be today's date. You cannot put variables in here, only values. However, if you're using the information design tool for universe development, whatever else, there is a way to create a predefined prompt. They could literally duplicate your prompt as a predefined that they can drop in. And there's a feature that was added as enhancement quite a long time ago, where you can actually set a default value and make it, for example, cur date, so that if they don't change it, the default defaults to today's date. Little things like that can really help the process. So he said, well, that took care of the first round. Uh, we won't set any default values, although we know that we could. And you do this one by one, and that's okay. We're going to look at each one independently. For state, it says enter state singular. Okay, it's only the way it's worded. I could say enter state one only, little things to enhance it. Do we want to keep the last value selected? Absolutely not. Obviously select only from a list for states. They're liable to mix up the abbreviation with the full name. And now when I go to set a default for state, we can't lose sight of how operators work. Most all query filters and even local filters have an object, an operator, and an operand, okay? And the operators drive a lot of the things that happen because this is an equal to and a prompt. They're never gonna get to select more than one, but they aren't able to select near in lines. So when I set a default value, it also comes in and many a person call me up saying, well, I can't select more than one state for this situation because you have an operator of equal to. They work together with each other, all right? So um, set my, my, my value for that if I want to, but it's only gonna allow me to do one because of the fact the operator drives it all, okay? So let's see what the overall effect is for these, what it does to the process, okay, by rerunning it, okay? Let me go up here. And one of the other big things that comes up is if you do have prompts in a report, notice it come back with years and state. Uh, for product lines, I forgot to do that one. We're gonna cancel out and fix that. I don't want that to happen right now. So obviously when I, I forgot to change the product lines properties for lines, keep the last value selected, no way, select only from a list. Certainly for this one, because of it being character string based with all the possible character string mistypings, we don't wanna have that happen. So go back to rerun it. Let's take a look at what happens. And I've got to pick something. 
So it's funny, but this is one of the rare areas when you're inside a Webby doing stuff where you can't drag it across. I can multi-select as we know, it can do things like this, but it's one of the rare areas where we get so spoiled by doing our, our uh, dragging and dropping, but here it does not. We'll pick one state. We have to pick at least one. And notice when you set up prompts, you have to have a minimum of one value for every one of them, potentially more, depending on what the operator is. And I can pick multiples as I'm doing in here, something like that. As long as I satisfy that requirement for one or more, um, I'm able to, to select my values and run the query without having any issues at all with that. Let it come back up. And now the values have changed. Now, what I did was in advance, just to save time, one of the big items that also comes up, people said, well, I have a, a report, report with lots of pages of data, 20, 30, 40, 50 pages of output. And I prompt the user, for example, in this example for state or for year rather, it's one of the three. And what I did was I took advantage of a user function that captures the values from a prompt, user response it's called, and it's been simplified. Let me open it up and show you what I did to save a little time. This one is a real simple one, but handy dandy one. What I wanted to be able to do is put a message up here that's, it says year selected and lets the user know. So if they're on page 20 or 21, they can, without trying to figure it out by looking in the data, they're able to see what values were actually selected. So I tagged on a little literal string with the plus for our, our standard concat. And I said, user response in all user response requires, just within double quotes, the exact prompt message, the exact text. I had an extra space when I put it together and I could not get this to come up because it did not match the exact text. So if I wanted to, I could create another one uh, for the uh, state, another one for lines, and what makes it so nice, and that look how easy that function is to use. I could then add a second one here that would display the state selected, sl state selected singular, then the plural for lines for as many as they picked as, as they want as well, and kind of lay it out. If you're doing this and having an issue, uh, there's a way that you can break these down and put the force of line feed carriage return in so that puts these going down instead of across. We actually have a little mini handout from our training that I would include that shows you how easy that is to do. It's also got random number generator in it as well. But a lot of times people don't want the values going across, but going down, change it from horizontal to vertical. And again, I only did one of the, uh, of the uh, user responses, but I could have done it for state and for lines as well, but you see what happens. So let's go back now and let's edit and let's look at some other options that are available that are very important to us. So as we're working our way through, for years, we look at the properties and after time starts to evolve, you end up with situations where the users come back and say, you know, I don't like some of the way that these prompts are operating, okay? Sometimes I wanna take all the years, but I have to select them all. Um, for state, I'm only allowed to pick one, okay? But for product lines, uh, I can pick one or more, but if I want them all, I have to go through a huge long list of values to be able to select them, all right? So we learned some little tricks along the way. And one of my favorite ones is optional prompt. Don't want to misuse it, but optional prompt makes it optional. So let's see what happens with years. We'll define that. All right. For the record, we're not going to change state right now for what it will be a very good reason, but we'll do product lines. And we're going to make them optional. We're going to make them optional for a really good reason. Again, a simple little thing like optional prompt, okay, here. So what's it going to do? Well, let's, instead of me giving you right up front the answer, let's see what it does when I rerun the query. Optional prompt is an incredible, simple, but really great feature to have. So now it comes back with years, okay? Now notice there's a couple things that are very, very different, which should clue you in. It says, it's got a green checkbox and you said, wait a minute, this can't be. I didn't select any values. What are you doing to me? I didn't select any values. Webby says, oh, no, 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 no. You don't have to put in a value. I said, well, what if I wanna pick in a value? So to save time, Assuming that you leave it blank and not select all the values, it doesn't automatically cache them in. So, well, I need to see them with the refresh values, okay? And I can select my values if I want to. But the way that the optional prompt works is you have a choice. I can select as many values as I want as controlled by the operator. Or if I leave it blank, Webby said, well, if you leave it blank, I'm gonna do you even one better favor. I'm gonna give you all the values. So I don't have to pick all four years to get all four of them. If I leave it blank, I will get exactly that. State, on the other hand, has an equal to, okay? So in the case of state, would I want that to be optional? Well, the problem is I don't want my users to pick more than one state at a time. Let's take an example. What if this was a, a customer or a patient report and you only want to bring up one patient ID at a time. You don't want to make a mistake and accidentally select, selecting 
two different patients and have two, two pages come out and the reports get distributed to both people, which should not happen. So for state, I have an equal to, which means I only want one. Well, then making it optional doesn't really make sense because it gives them a backdoor way to get around it. Don't want to forget that. Product lines, once again, it leaves it blank. Now, that it does this, it doesn't waste the time cashing something in because you made it optional because you might leave it empty all the time to get all the values. So why waste the effort? But if I do want to take a look at them, I can like this. And if the prompt weren't optional, here's the problem. What if this list was 50 or 60 long? And our little windows here just don't give us that much display. Hey, Sam, you need to give us more room. I know you're out there. So if it was 50, 60, 75 long, you'd have to scroll to the very top one, select it, get good with your shift key, go down to the very last one, select them all, click the arrows, and get them over to the right side. What are the odds you're going to miss one? Probably pretty high. So you look at it and say, Ew, if I make it optional, especially for this one, and the window is small enough that I don't get all the values, a user could very easily miss it. So it's an education process as well. So what you'd wanna do if you're gonna do this, okay, uh, we would probably wanna change the setting for, for the product lines or, or change the, the wording of it. So let's, let's just cancel back out for that one. That was for lines. So what I might wanna do here, product lines, let's bring it back up and open it up guys. What I might want to do, what, in fact, what I would strongly recommend to do is you say, please select lines and put in parentheses, blank equals all. Teeny tiny little messages like that are huge. For example, the new feature that allows us to put, create local variables and have a description box for self-help. That's cool. We got to do the same here. We got to let the users know, hey, if you leave it blank, you get all the values. Same for years. For state, on the other hand, it says one only. That's it. That's all you're going to get. And of course, setting default values could be used as part of that as well. So we made two out of the three optional, knowing that. So, well, now I don't have to worry about those anymore. I rerun the query. I select it. It comes back. The only one I absolutely have to select is state because it's not optional and I have to pick one value. For all the rest, it doesn't matter. There's no freeform area notice for years, no freeform area, and particularly for product lines, prompts for large alphanumeric string based objects where you have a lot of strings of uh, values, a real long list, you would not want to have those uh, as freeform input as well. And again, I skipped over uh, as well the, um, uh, the prompting section. I'll talk about that in a minute. Notice it says required pr prompts up here to let you know about that one as well. So lo and behold, now we've gotten much smarter about it. Okay. I'm not going to show you, but if you schedule a report, and a lot of you probably use a schedule, although most of us are using the InfoBurst product, much better way to go with much more power and flexibility. But nevertheless, if you're scheduling a report with prompts. As we all know, there's a, if you have to go open up the scheduler, it'll actually come to a place where, this, where it will show prompts and allow you to set prompt values so that at the time the scheduled report runs, it has values. If you're going hey, to do Michael, that, yes. just a quick question. It is, what is the window available prompt variance for and do you ever use it for anything? Uh, it's one of, the, one of the things I'm coming to. I'm about to get to the prompt variance. Sounds so, good. Thank you. A good question, though. So if you schedule it and there's prompts in your report, it'll come back. One of the tricks of the trade is if you do a lot of scheduling your reports with prompts, make sure they're all have all the have a prompt setting of uh, optional. And if you don't put anything in for them, it'll give you all the values. At least you can bring it down from after it's scheduled and you bring the report back up live. You could go in and use local filters and input controls as well. So somebody caught that, huh? I was waiting to wonder if that would happen. I love this feature, prompt properties. Let me go back to the query panel. I'm going to thank Samuel who's out there and some of the others for this awesome feature. What happened was, let's run the query. I've already saved this report. Let me, let me save it again from the other end. But uh, prompt variance is a feature that allows you to build a, a list, a predefined list of values that can be plugged in like a default. And it comes up when you're running it, but you have to save the document one time first in order to do this. So what happened was, since I had saved it prior to right now when I was getting it together for the presentation and I had it all set up, it's already been saved. So notice for years, state and line. So let's do this. Let's, let's pick a value for years, okay? And we'll pick 20 and 21. We'll pick a state value of California. And for product lines, we'll refresh it. And we'll put in this two or three objects, doesn't really matter. Let's get two or three values over there. 
working with a new mouse and get used to the uh, touch on it drives you crazy. So, so these values are all set up to run. And I look at it and say, well, wait a minute. This would be an awesome setting for a default for me for California. So that if I had California, it would automatically plug in 2021 and the corresponding lines I picked here for the state of California. Well, then along comes a feature called prompt variance. And this is a request from user community a long time ago. And many of you know, I get the luxury or the opportunity to work with Samuel. Hopefully you're out there, Samuel, tonight. And they developed this feature where you can kind of save a preset list of prompt values. So I want to save this set right here. Now that's been saved, I said, well, let's click the down arrow. Or actually, we're going to go create new first. I always want to jump the gun. We're going to call this group California. And I can check, you know, prompt name for years, state, and whatever, or uncheck if I don't want to, and I, whatever, but I've got them all set up that way. And now I've got the, the, the variant set up for that. Then I go back in for that and say, well, let's do another one for Colorado. Okay. And what we want to do is we want a different set of options here. So let's take that one out just to make it a little bit different. We'll put overcoats in there. What do we have over there already? Accessories, just something different. And then for the years for that one, we only want, let's take out 21. We'll just make it a single year, okay? Actually took them both out and we'll put a 19 in there just to put something else in there and away we go. So now I've got a preset list of values and I ran it by mistake, but that's okay. We clicked the wrong spot. So it's gonna come back, year selected 19 for Colorado for the lines that you saw. So let's go back and look at it. Uh, I need to edit it. I wanted to go run again, but I wanna edit it first to make sure we're set, I wanna check. So, nope, we're good, we'll rerun it. So the prompt's gonna come back up again as always. So now what I can do is I can go up here and I, oh, I need to reselect the years, my mistake. I forgot to save it. I do that all the time and get caught up in trying to Get it going. We wanted just one year for that one. And we'll pick one state, which we're required to do. We'll make that one Florida just to be different. And if it's Florida, I want 219 and I want the lines to be, we'll just make it one value, make it easier to see it that way. Maybe just city skirts, okay, for that one. And now I can go up and hit the disc button and say, I wanna save that combination right there. And I wanna call that one the Florida. Now this came about from a, from a customer that had like 10 prompts. And the first one was something like a state level and all the other ones were additional objects that they're prompting for within that single query. And they wanted a unique for Florida, unique for California, unique for Colorado. You could build one for every one of them. So now there's Florida, it's been saved. Okay, we can do that. So now when I come in, it comes up by default with blank that I can say, well, no, I want it to be the California settings. Or, or no, I want it to default to the Florida settings. And it automatically resets any and all. Now imagine there were 10, and that's exactly what a customer situation was that I had. They had like 10 prompts. They loved the feature up here that I showed you from Corey Properties to reorder them because they were getting hit with a barrage of changing the orders. But look how cool that prompt variance is. You can build a collection. If it didn't have to be state, it could have been based on year. For each year, I wanted certain states and lines. But look how simple, look how simple. This is one of the many things with the developers were so good at responding to requests from the user community. And I know this one came in from a group that I work with and I know Samuel and the crew there, we throw all kinds of interesting goodies at them. And this is one of them as well. So it's called hey, prompt variance. It's automatic, isn't that cool? Really hey nice. Michael, another question just came in. Um, can I use the save prompts in a scheduled report? Same. Uh, saved, the saved prompts in the scheduled report. You know what? I don't know. I have to check that out. Let me try that. I'll have to try it and, and see how that works. I can I can follow up and get back to you on that one. Try it out. I, I don't remember seeing the prompt variant show up as an option in there, but I'll check it out. And if uh, I can get your information, I'll get your response back as well. Right. So, so you saw what we, a lot of the really cool stuff, actually it's better to do it right by looking directly at the, uh, the properties window itself. So if I go into properties here, this really kind of gives it all to you, all encompassing. The one exception I mentioned was if you're setting a default and it's a date field, like you want a variable in here, sit down with your developers. It's very easy to create it in the IDT. You know, you're at prompt function to do that. And there is a setting that allow you to set a default for it and to get you around it very easily as well. But this, there's so much at our fingertips that we just don't think about with prompts. 
And it just, it's so good, makes everything dynamic. If you're trying to do cascading, it's not a setup in the universe for prompts. What you could do is, is you could bring all the data into the, the report viewer window. And with the, with the new cascading feature for, uh, for input controls, it's very simple to create a true cascade. You could do a state city store name one, for example, and do your cascading there as an end user instead, instead of doing it up front, which in case it would have to be built in the universe, we do it that way instead. So again, gives you an opportunity for that. So there's a lot of nice stuff that you can do and the prompts are really, really important. And you wanna really take advantage of it, let the users know a lot of the functionality that's there. So I did not do anything on ands and ors, that's really a separate discussion, but I would be very careful when you're doing prompting like we did here, reports with prompts and trying to do multi-layered ands and ors, the old union intersect mixture like fiscal year where you have a year and a quarter for first fiscal year, quarter the second. Those would be great typically hard-coded, but if you're prompting, you got to think a little bit more through how that's going to affect the ands and or logic. Ours are straight and, it was no problem at all. But don't forget about the, uh, the, the grouping functionality or bracketing is what they call it as well. So, so I wrap it up with that. I, we, as we saw, we got the prompt variant one in there. I'll check the schedule one out. I'm almost certain it doesn't, but I will confirm 100%. So remember how the window comes up for that and let you know for sure on that one.